Racing takes place on Saturday out at Hollywood Bets. Kenilworth, we are racing on the summer course. Nine races to look forward to. And the feature on the day is the Summer Fling Stakes, a grade three contest where they race for a gross stake of 200,000 Rand. Race number one will get underway at 12.40. And the final race will jump at 20 past uh, five, all things being equal. Joining me on the line is Graham Hawkins. And uh, Graham, how are you doing? All good. All good. Thanks, Rayul. Nice to catch up with you again. Um, compliments of the season to you and your family so and uh, once again to all of our punters of course absolutely now uh, Graham before we get into the meeting obviously uh, the summer fling stakes uh, is the feature on the day and it's a, it's a grade 3 contest and uh, we're just uh, before we came on air you, you mentioned to me is, is hold my hand going to get it right and uh, just your quick thoughts on, on that race race number 7 because she's, she obviously looks to be uh, one of the leading lights She's deep in the red. She's entitled to be deep in the red. She's best in on ratings. She's uh, the highest rated one-time winning four-year-old in the country. She's probably the highest stakes earner in that category. Uh, it's been a long time since she last won a race, 581 days. But it is interesting that Richard Faree reunites with her. He won uh, Hold My Hand's Maiden. Uh, he has ridden her one other time since when she ran fourth. Uh, during champion season but if she doesn't get it right today then I don't know it is the key race for me it's hold my hand all the field and uh, I'm certainly going with hold my hand uh, but she has let the side down before uh, but it's hard to identify what her principal dangers might be perhaps silver links but we'll get to that in a moment but for me hold my hand is the key runner on the day uh, and most of the poems are going to revolve around hold my hand you mentioned uh, the word key runner in, in race number one. I thought this horse, uh, King of Spin, he tops the betting boards. He has found a bit of uh, market support as well, 22 to 10 into 18 to 10. I think he could be the horse that uh, punters could start their day around. I know this horse gives that man a bells. Could be a lively danger on that run to the Grey King. But um, when we have a look at this horse, King of Spin, he gets draw one, which I think is a huge advantage. And 1,400 meters once again, I just believe he could... Be, uh, be the horse uh, that takes a bit of beating in race one? I think he's entitled to his position as favourite. I think he is going to be hard to beat. I'm not surprised that there's money coming for number one, King of Spin, as you've mentioned. He cracked pole position. His main rival will be number seven, Give That Man a Bells. There was only half a length between them when they ran second and third behind the Grey King. On that occasion, King of Spin jumped out of Stallgate 13 uh, over the uh, 1,400 metres, but Give That Man a Bells was drawn even worse that day. He was drawn in gate number 16, so he had it all to do. So you can't take number seven and give that man a bells too lightly because he'll strip very fit. Uh, Richard Perry takes the right for Peter Musket. But number one, King of Spin has got to be the first choice. The four lines have been franked and he should get punters off to a good start. Uh, number seven, give that man a bells, the exacter horses. Others worth a mention for trifectors and quartets. Uh, number four, press on regardless. Wasn't too far behind them when running against uh, the Grey King, and he was also drawn awkwardly that day. He's taken a long time to come to hand as press on regardless, but you get the feeling there's more to come. You've also got to consider number five, the Night Ferry, and uh, number 12, Spelling B for the minor placings. But a pretty confident choice. King of Spin to win the opener. I think once you look past horse number one, King of Spin does uh, tend to become uh, a bit more trappy. But horse number one, King of Spin, he's going to be the top selection in race number one. We move along to race number two on the day. This is a maiden play for fillies and mares, 1,400 metres a trip. It will be the start of the bar pot. Quarter past one is the off time. And uh, your favourite is Ice Rain, 18 to 10 into 14 to 10. Charlene trading at 7 to 2. Sun Spectacular at 6 to 1. It's in 7 to 1 and better bar those. Now, last time out, uh, there was a lot of betting support around number 6, Ice Rain. And she ran on very powerfully to uh, just get... Uh, get get there too late, beaten by Nal the boss. I think she's going to be a big runner, but uh, the way Rockin' Peony finished off uh, last time out, she's, she's probably a horse that needs to uh, go into the mix as well. And when you have a look at the market, there could be a bit of a discrepancy because you've got Ice Rain at 14 to 10 and Rockin' Peony at 7 to 1. A lot of money coming for number six, Ice Rain, as you've mentioned. Uh, at this stage, I still have to question the quality of the Nile the Boss form. Uh, Ice Rain was charging home. Rocking Peony, as you've mentioned, was charging home. But if you, in fact, uh, Ice Rain came from behind Rocking Peony, but they were both far back turning for home and both finished off the race very well with Ice Rain fading by only a neck to get the 
to terms with Nile the Boss, and the rocking peony was only half a length back. As I mentioned, the form of that race comes under scrutiny, and this race will show whether or not uh, that form is going to stand up. But uh, I now think that Ice Rain is perhaps a little sharp in the market, and as you mentioned, uh, rocking peony possibly offers more value but uh, my top choice is going to be number nine Charlene uh, I think she's done enough to win a race of this nature she comes out of different form lines the one run that uh, really catches my eye was over this distance 1400 meters admittedly back in August when she was beaten only a short head by a wind runner who's gone on to frank that form and runs in this meeting a little later on so number nine Charlene could give the Brett Crawford stable an early double we fancy King of Spin to win the first Charlene to perhaps win the second uh, but it's not going to be easy this is a competitive maiden uh, Ice Rain and Rocking Peony have got to be taken seriously Sun Spectacular been a bit disappointing the form behind Eternal Optimist and Grandiosa uh, that's questionable form the one horse that can improve and could offer really big value is number four, Wagook, who is the stable companion to number nine, Charlene. Went 1,800 metres last time. That was patently too far. The form before that was pretty good. Took a little while, formerly trained on the high field, took a little while to acclimatise to the Western Cape. But if you go back in the form lines of 7th of October, uh, there was only uh, a neck in it between Ice Rain and Wagook. And again, not much behind Pineapple Mud Green. Little to separate Ice Rain and Wagook. So wherever Ice Rain runs, Wagook should be right on top of her. Certainly the form does favour Ice Rain, but Wagook is trading at around 10 to 1. That could offer good value and certainly must be included in trifectas and quartets. But my top choice uh, will be number 9, Charlene, uh, trading at around 7 to 2. I think number 6, Ice Rain, a little sharp in the market. Yeah, it may not be as easy as the betting market does suggest with Ice Rain at 14 to 10 gram with the horse number nine, Charlene, and you've got horses like Wugug, Rocking Peony that uh, offer some value. And even a horse like Sun Spectacular, who was disappointing last time out in uh, an open maiden, but uh, perhaps she could bounce back uh, to some of her earlier form if she puts it all together. Moving along to race number three, 1600 meters the trip. This is a maiden plate that will get the place accumulator underway. Favorite is Lightning Glow, trading at 8 to 10 in the market. You've got uh, number one, for Lopaki at uh, 28 to 10. He's found a bit of support from 33 to 10 into 28 to 10. It's in 7 to 1, Mr. Belvedere, and then it's uh, 10 to 1, and better ball those. Now, this horse, uh, Lightning Glow, returning off a rest and Galden, second to Duskwood last time out, where he was all the rage. But back at Hollywood Bets, Kenilworth, how do you see. Uh, how do you think he could go, Graham? Well, I do think it's a two-horse race uh, between number six, Lightning Glow, and number one, Fuhr Lopaki. Before we get back to Lightning Glow, of course, Fuhr Lopaki was fourth behind the Grey Tick. Now, earlier on, we're going to see King of Spin and give that man a bells. Uh, they were second and third behind the Grey King. We're going to see how they run and whether that form stands up to scrutiny. But Fuhr Lopaki showed a lot of improvement in only its second run. Um, after a bit, uh, you know, pretty long rest. It made its debut in July, had its second start on the 6th of December. Sean Veal reunites with the Eric Sands stable, and Sean has been doing a lot of good work for Eric Sands. But both uh, Fuhr Lopaki and Lightning Glow are three-year-old sons of Versing Gedericks. I do think that Fuhr Lopaki is very much alive, particularly if King of Spin and Give That Man a Bells run well in the opener. But Lightning Glow obviously has a lot of form to recommend him. Promising debut behind Teflon Man, good run behind Sail to the Moon, and then Das Gut now reappears as a gelding. So these two do jump out the page. Uh, Lightning Glow is uh, slightly preferred, but I don't think Again, the discrepancy in the betting nine to ten lightning glow and around three to one for for Lurpiki tells the whole story. I do think they're both very much alive. Mr. Belvedere showed a lot of improvement the last time, could challenge for one of the minor placings along with number 11 plus four. But I make it a match in two between numbers one for Lurpiki and Lightning Glow. I've put both into the opening leg of the place accumulator, uh, but I expect them to dominate the race. Yeah, both one in, uh, one in six, and uh, I think you should be uh, safe for those two numbers and, in fact, even double up in the first leg of the PA. Moving along to race number four, 1,600 metres a trip. 25 past 2 is the off time and your fixed odds betting market has got Kingdom of Heaven at the top at 33 to 10. Not far behind is a 
Promete and Rosh Kadesh at 7 to 2. The Future Prince 11 to 2, and then it's 8 to 1 and better ball those. I thought that this is a competitive contest where there's uh, a few horses in with winning chances. Kingdom of Evan, obviously on his day, he can uh, he can certainly go well in a field of this nature. And I think with 54 on his back, it's uh, it's a positive. But I go back to horse number one, Carrier Coup, because his penultimate start is what catches the eye. Now, Montien happened to come through and win a group race after that. And uh, he subsequently ran fifth in uh, the King's Plate, which was a cracking performance behind uh, the two top rated horses in uh, South Africa. And I think that his last start was all wrong from a deep draw. They used him up, took him to the head of affairs, and he just found nothing when put under pressure. But from draw one, I think Sean Veal can be slightly more conservative with him and get him into a good position. And I think at 8-1, to one, he could offer some value, Graham. Yeah, he's certainly got the form to be very competitive, uh, Kerry Arkin, as you say, he's uh, competitively handicapped and his penultimate run behind Montin was an exceptional performance. So he comes into the race, as you mentioned, it is a competitive race, so there are many with chances. Uh, my top choice in the race would be number five, Prometeur, to go back to back. He won a very strong progress plate last time out. He was limited to a six pound penalty. Uh, otherwise, he would have got more. The conditions of the progress plate limit the winners to six pound penalties. Uh, otherwise, he would have got more because he certainly ran well above his rating of 89 when beating Weekend Go All Night last time out. But having said that, he was also uh, beaten of a lower mark in this sort of class previously at Rosh Kadesh. He's certainly handicapped to run very close to Prometheus, so they both must go into the reckoning. I don't know what to make of number eight, Kingdom of Heaven. Uh, for me, he's a bit of a false favourite. I may have an egg on my face uh, for saying that. Uh, he certainly has the ability, but he's not the easiest to ride. Uh, he takes a bit of a rise in class here. Yes, he does come down in the weights a little bit, uh, but... Uh, He's meeting a pretty competitive field here. Money coming certainly for number four, Future Prince. Ten to one was an offer earlier. Uh, that last run uh, behind uh, Montine was no reflection of his ability. He has his third run after a rest, and on his previous form, he has to be competitive. So as you've mentioned, it's a difficult start to the pick six. It's a class three handicap over 1,600 metres. Uh, in order of preference, I would go five, Prometeur, nine, Rosh Kadesh, four future prince, one karaoke, and eight kingdom of heaven, but they've all got winning chances and must be considered. Yeah, very, very trappy race, and a race where if you are looking past those five numbers that Graham mentioned, possibly even include the field because uh, you could get a bit of a result in race number four. Moving along to race number five, which will be uh, the start of jackpot one, 1,600 meters the trip. Three o'clock is the off time. This is a class four contest, and uh, the favorite is prevalence. At 33 to 10, 9 to 2 about Coastal Commander, 11 to 2, no apologies, 8 to 1, Lucha Verde, and then it's 8 to 1, Master of Paris, Royal Swan Master, Lindbergh, 14 to 1, and better bar those. You can scratch number 13, Oliver, so it's a field of just 13 runners that remain. And Graham, it's another very, very competitive race where there's quite a few horses in with a chance, but I like the look of for horse number 8, Coastal Commander, now that he steps up to a mile. I think it could suit him. And uh, Richard Fourie takes a ride. Despite him being a horse that uh, is usually in a handy position, I think if they give him a chance, especially from that eight draw, I think he could run on quite nicely. And uh, 1,600 meters, as I mentioned, I think could suit him. So what's your thoughts on race number five? Coastal Commander is certainly one of the leading lights. It's interesting that he steps up to 1,600 meters. The furthest he's been to date was over 1,400 meters. And remember, he was only a length and a half behind Schlesloui um, in October. So that was a high-quality performance. He's run third to multiple winner Winter Pearl recently. Completely outpaced over 1,200 meters by dominant winner Axel in his last start. So Vaughan Marshall and Richard Furry combined with the three-year-old son of Lancaster Bomber stepping up to 1,600 meters. So Certainly a very competitive run and one of only two that I've included in this leg of the place accumulator. There's a class four handicap over 1,600 metres, so there's always a potential for an upset. The other that I've included, and probably just my top choice, is number three, Prevalence. May have found 1,800 metres a touch too far in his last two starts. If you go back uh, to the fourth of November over this trip ran second behind Rule of Thumb and on that run has got the beating of a number of of the opposition here. He's drawn well in gate three. I think 1,600 metres 
is his best trip. Uh, there was nine to two available earlier in the week. The money is coming for number three, Prevalence. He can't be labelled a good thing in a Class 4 handicap, but I think you'll get a very competitive run out of him. I think you'll get a very good run for your money. And as I've mentioned in the place accumulator, I've banked, uh, backed him up with number eight, Coastal Commander. But when it comes to the pick sixes and the jackpots, as we've mentioned, Hold My Hand is uh, it's uh, you know all in with Hold My Hand. So she does present as a possible banker for the day. So you may want to go a little wider in terms of the pick sixes and the jackpots. Uh, number seven, no apologies, was impressive last time out, and he may have more to come. So let's not underestimate number seven, no apologies. So certainly as far as the pick six and jackpots are concerned, you've got sorry number seven no apologies then all of master of paris royal swan master and in particular lindbergh lindbergh's got a real good form but the draw is tricky drawn on the extreme outside it's not going to be easy for him and we'll be looking for some improvement from number four lute verde uh, so those are the ones worth a mention but for me three prevalence to hold out number eight coastal commander but i certainly wouldn't be surprised to see coastal commander step up to the plate and win this yeah, I think if you can get through a race number five with a limited spend, you've done extremely well because it's a race where you can make a case for a number of runners in uh, the fifth race. And you heard from Graham numbers three and eight, the numbers for him in the place accumulator. But uh, let's see how horse number eight, Coastal Commander, does go with uh, Richard Furry in the irons uh, for the second time. Moving along to race number six, 1800 meters the trip. This is a class four event for fillies and mares. 15.35, the off time, the start of jackpot number two. Favorite is win runner trading at three to one, enchanting choice at seven to two, five to one about passion doll, six to one epicleros. It's then ten to one, and better about those. Now this uh, filly enchanting choice, she she's obviously on the up, and she ran a cracker cracker last time out, and on that run she's got a win runner. Stone cold out the weight, and I expected to turn the form around with win runner on that performance. And for me, if you were to go lies in this race, she would pose as a potential uh, place accumulator banker. Well, I've included the two of them. Uh, I know you say that she's got to win runner Stone Cold. I wouldn't be quite that emphatic. Certainly, at the weights this time around, number eight enchanting choice has got the measure of number six wind runner. But I think wind runner is improving. As we've mentioned, she beat Charlene, who I like earlier in the day, by shorter. Then a good third by Andre Palace, and she's progressive. They're both progressive, so they could be improving at the same rate or at different rates. But I've included both number six wind driver, runner and eight enchanting choice into the place accumulator not taking any chances but yes they are my top two choices only two others worth a mention as far as the jackpots and the pick sixes are concerned i made this an absolute four cornered contest you've got to throw in number five passion doll her form is solid a post made when the run was uh, was excellent and despite the poor draw number 13 epic Cleros, uh, certainly was quite uh, impressive behind gentleman joe yes receiving a lot away from gentleman joe uh, last time out, but he's uh, he's in pretty good form, and that wasn't a bad run for a three-year-old filly against an older, solid uh, campaigner in the form of, um, of of Gentleman Joe. So, Epicleros makes the cut as far as the jackpots and the pick sixes are concerned. Uh, but I've gone with eight enchanting choice and six wind runner in the place accumulator, and uh, yeah, we'll give the benefit of the doubt. I'm a lot less bullish than you are, Rahil, as far as as uh, as making enchanting choice a solid win bet. Uh, but I do respect Wendrunner and chances to the other two that I've mentioned. Uh, six and eight, the two horses for Graham in race number six. And uh, let's see who uh, comes out uh, victorious in uh, this contest over 1,800 metres. Certainly going to be an exciting race. We then move along to race number seven, which is the feature on the day. 2,000 metres, the trip. Qu ten past uh, four is the off time. And it's... Uh, a field of uh, eight runners that will line up for the feature. Summer Flink stakes a grade three event. And Graham, hold my hand. She is uh, the horse that obviously has been costly to follow. She's been uh, frustrating, but she tops the boards at seven to ten. When we have a look at her last start, she uh, beat uh, the likes of Royal Invitation, Silver Links, Virginia Sweet. She's got them held at the weight as well. And... 2,000 meters should not be a concern given that uh, she's placed over 2,400 meters. For he takes a ride, he's the only one to have won a board up. Surely, 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 Saturday could be a day in the sun. 
It's now or never, Rahil. Uh, go all in with number six. Hold my hand. If you're not in a camp, you've got to throw them all in, although I think Silver Lynx is probably the biggest danger given a form of January last year. When you go to January last year, and also sometimes come well at the same time each year, she actually beat Hold My Hand uh, in a race at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth, although this time the weights do favour Hold My Hand. When you think that Hold My Hand was third behind Make It Snappy in the Cape Phillies Guineas, uh, was second behind Sarki in the East Coast Handicap, third behind Peach Dakery in the South African Phillies Guineas, fourth behind Rain in Holland in the Will Lavington, and then fourth behind Jewel Oakswin and none other in the Oaks that you mentioned over 2 4. It's hard to believe that she's still a one time winner, and it's virtually impossible to believe that she's not going to win this year's renewal of the Summer Fling Stakes. So short and sweet, uh, hold my hand, all in, banker in everything. For me, it's hold my hand or bust, and if she doesn't deliver, well, you'll know my fate. Yeah, hold my hand to uh, Saturday. Could well be a day in, in the sun, and hopefully she can get the job done. Race number eight, 1,400 metres, class four contest for fillies and mares. Quarter to five is the off time, and it's a wide open race that uh, will be the penultimate race on the day. Scratch numbers uh, 13 and 14. So it's a field of just 14 runners that remain. Give me that Pearl, 33 to 10, along with Trip to Maputo. Ronnie of Janzi at uh, 9 to 2. That's found a bit of support from Sixers. It's uh, 13 to 2, figure 8, and then it's 12 to 1. And better bar those. I thought uh, Trip to Maputo and Ronnie of Janzi could be uh, two horses that... Uh, could, pet, could potentially dominate you. There's obviously um, a difference in the weight given that Trip to Maputo's won twice and Ronnie of Johnsy only once. But I think between these uh, two horses, I think, uh, I think we could get a good run for our money. Yeah, there's certainly amongst the leading lights a little bit of early support coming for number four, Ronnie of John Z. Probably needed that last run over 1,200 when fifth to knockout. Certainly not a bad run. Will appreciate stepping up to 1,400 metres. That's the distance she won a maiden over at Hollywood Bets Gravel. Admittedly, that was a poor field. Uh, she beat the moderate maiden fairy trip. It took a long time to win her maiden, but did get the job done eventually. But Ronnie of John Z's got a beautiful pedigree. She's got plenty of for improvement. She's only had the three starts. I'm not surprised there's money coming for number four, Ronnie of John Z. Uh, number one, give me that pearl. I expect her to be very competitive uh, from pole position along with number three, Trip to Maputo. Both of those owned by the Drakenstein stud but racing out of different stables. Give me that pearl, Justin Snaith, the Grand Fenica, and Trip to Maputo, Elder de Mayer, and Candace Bass Robinson. Now, Trip to Maputo was third behind Go Like Flow last time after recording back to back victories and cheese at around seven or two in the market 15 senora victoria sometimes you can't make any sense of the antipose market but most times they're right and we're wrong i mean senora victoria's any price i mean she's got good form over track and trip uh four starts a winner second and fourth and last time out she finished marginally in front of trip to maputo who is at around 7-2, to two, and Senora Victoria around 16-1. to one. So that discrepancy in the market, I don't understand. And I always have a measure of respect for number nine, Little Miss Pink, because she's always the type that can blow everybody out of the water. So I do make it quite a competitive Class 4 Phillies and Mayors handicap over 1,400 metres. Uh, but yes, a trip to Maputo, Ronnie of John Z, give me that pearl, Senora Victoria, and Little Miss Pink. Those are the five that make up my shortlist. I'm not really nailing my colours to the mask. If I had to go for anything, I'd go for number one, give me that pearl. Uh, but certainly trip to Maputo and Ronnie of John Z are very much alive. I think to add to horse number one, give me that pearl, when uh, she had a last start, everything was just winning from the front at Hollywood Bets, Durbanville, and... Uh, she was sort of sitting in midfield and she just never managed to quicken on the day. But um, there could certainly be a lot of scope still for improvement from horse number one. Give me that pearl in race number eight. Moving along to race number nine, which will be the final race on the day. This is a class four contest over 1,200 meters. And it's uh, a big field that will line up for race number nine. You've got a field of 16 runners that are set to participate here. Plaza Accord is uh, still to uh, get a jockey and... Uh, He's obviously a horse that's got a lot of ability, but uh, his last start was all wrong. Favorite in this uh, event is Mighty Mac at 11 to 2. Winter Pearl, who's looking for three in a row. He's at 7 to 1. King's Ransom, 8 to 1. The Tinker Man at 10s, along with Lions Cross, Nordic Chief. And then you get in 12 to 1 and better bar those. Now, Graham race number nine, a very, very trappy race. 
what's your numbers in uh, the place accumulator? Because I think it's a race where we're looking for cover. Yeah, I've got a long list of numbers. I think six or seven. I can't remember. We'll go through my perm in a moment. Before we get any further, though, if number 17, Night Tiger, the reserve runner, gets a run, if there is a scratching, everybody knows we record this show on a Friday morning, which is more than 24 hours ahead of the start of the action at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. If the reserve runner, number 17, Night Tiger, comes in i've thrown it into my place accumulator perm just in case if it does get scratched we'll run with the tote favorite and possibly double up uh, but night tiger would be a serious runner if it does get into the race interesting richard for re reunites with hold my hand earlier and now he reunites with mighty mac um for the first time i shouldn't say reunites unites with mighty mac for the first time he often writes for the paul reese stable uh, and his record for the paul reese stable is good uh, mighty mac uh, was his own worst enemy last time out when narrowly beaten by mr frost his form prior to that was pretty good uh, wherever he runs winter pearl shouldn't be far away as you said this is definitely uh, the toughest race on the card my top choice would be number eight mighty mac my next two choices would be uh, three lines crossed. He was running on very strongly last time out, showing a return to form. Nine with to Pearl obviously warrants respect. The form speaks for itself. Others to mention, watch for a better run from number one, the Tinker Man. Vaughan Marshall has always held him in high regard. He's under-delivered, uh, but this is the kind of race in which, number one, the Tinker Man could suddenly bounce back to form. Number 10, Wyag gets blinkers for the first time. That's interesting. That stable companion uh, to lines crossed. And then number 13, uh, Fort Red. Well, we've discussed Fort Red many times on our shows together and he always represents a threat. And then don't discount the chances of number four, Benjamin. He refused to load last time, was a scratching. Uh, he was meant to have raced after the 10th of December. He was obviously uh, completely outclassed behind Cosmic Highway. Uh, but his best form in this sort of division brings Benjamin into the race with a chance. And as I've mentioned, if Night Tiger does get a run, then you've got to throw him into the mix. Plaza record can improve. It's a tough race. We could go on and on and on. Uh, but I Again, I say that eight Mighty Mac, uh, three Lions Crossed, and nine Winter Pearl are the leading lights. Uh, but any kind of result can be expected here. Yeah, I certainly agree with that uh, comment. It's uh, a trappy contest, and uh, I think you've got to go as wide as you possibly can in race number nine. And if you, if you can go the field, I'd suggest even including the field because you could get a train smash result in race number nine. We're going to move along to the suggested bet now, and Graham will take us through his place accumulator for the day and uh, the pay does begin in the third race on the program and that will get underway at 1350 over 1600 meters Graham take it away with your PA opening leg race three off at 10 minutes to two does look a match race between for Lopeki and lightning glow we're going to bank at number six lightning glow second leg numbers four five and nine that's future prince Prometer and rosh kadesh uh, third leg numbers three and eight prevalence and coastal commander fourth leg numbers six and eight windrunner and enchanting choice uh, then the key runner of the entire card, number six, hold my hand in the 200,000 rand summer flick stakes. Uh, it's all in with number six, hold my hand in all the exotic bets for the day for me. And uh, she should surely get it right this time. Certainly shapes up as a as an obvious place accumulator banker. Then the penultimate leg, numbers one, three and nine. Give me the that pearl trip to Maputa and always include Little Miss Pink in case we do get a rough result. And as you mentioned, as wide as possible in the last leg, all of numbers 1, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10 and 17. That's the Tinker Man, Lions Crossed, Benjamin, Mighty Mac, Winter Pearl, Wyag, and certainly throwing in the reserve runner number 17, Night Tiger, who if he gets a run will be a lively runner in this contest. If he doesn't get a run, then the third favourite can double us up, perhaps. Uh, that's my suggested place, accumulator perm. It's a, it's a nice card in the sense that you can narrow a number of the legs down, uh, but one or two really trappy races. Yeah, certainly uh, some nice horses that will be taking their place on a Saturday. Uh, place accumulator perm, 252 rand for a full unit. And I think it's uh, quite a good perm there from Graham, and uh, he's gone wide in the final leg, which uh, I think he could maybe even double up with a couple of the horses that he's included. But uh, Graham, thanks very much for your time. All the best, and uh, have a wonderful weekend thank you Rahil all the best to you thanks very much uh, to Graham Hawkins all the best with racing out at Hollywood Best Kenilworth on Saturday hopefully it's a profitable day's racing